Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup on People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines. UN says that US deportation of Haitian migrants may violate international law. Protests held as Namibian parliament votes on German genocide agreement. Pakistan Supreme Court orders resettlement of families at risk of forced evictions. China to stop new coal power projects abroad in response to the climate crisis. In our first story, the UN Refugee Agency has said that the expulsion of Haitian migrants from the US may violate international law. Nearly 9,000 people continue to be stranded near a bridge at the US border town of Del Rio. Photos of mounted US agents flinging horse reins like whips has caused widespread outrage. Food, water and medical care also remain scarce in the area. Meanwhile, around 4,000 people have been taken to detention centers. Over 500 people have been sent to Haiti so far. The US is carrying out these deportations using a Trump-era health law called Title 42. It allows border agents to deport people without giving them a chance to apply for asylum. UNHCR head Filippo Grande said that this could constitute refoulement or forcible return of asylum seekers. Among those who have been deported to Haiti are many who haven't lived in the country for years. Instead, they came to the US from Chile, Brazil and Central America. Migrants have also set up camps on the border side in Mexico where aid agencies are present. Mexican authorities have started transferring people from the border to southern states. Meanwhile, Haitian officials have also asked the US for a humanitarian moratorium. The country is struggling to cope with the devastating earthquake amid a political crisis. Around 400 people held a protest outside Namibia's parliament on Tuesday. Lawmakers are set to vote on an agreement signed between the government and Germany. The deal acknowledges Germany's colonial-era genocide of the Owaheroro and Nama people. It also includes a sum of $1.3 billion paid over 30 years for reconstruction and development. However, Germany has stated that no legal claims for compensation can be derived from the deal. Between 1904 and 1908, German colonizers killed an estimated 65 to 80,000 Herero people. At least 10 to 20,000 Nama and an uncon unconfirmed number of Asan people were also killed. After the deal was announced in May, it was met with protests by a number of communities. Traditional leaders stated that they had been excluded from the negotiations. The Herero and Nama peoples have demanded formal and full reparations. They have also demanded that Germany recognize the responsibility towards genocide as per international law. Protesters marched to the parliament again on Tuesday. However, the matter was tabled for September 22nd shortly after. People have urged the ruling Swapo party to not push the deal through parliament. In our next story, protests were held outside Pakistan's Supreme Court on Wednesday ahead of a key ruling on forced evictions. Thousands of working class families in Karachi are facing home demolitions. Around 8,000 houses along the city's Gujar and Orangi waterways have been targeted under an anti-encroachment drive. Officials claim that the demolitions are necessary to prevent flooding. The Supreme Court had ordered the removal of the encroachments after the 2020 floods. However, activists stated that the order has been deliberately misinterpreted to evict families. Work on Karachi's water systems is also being financed by the World Bank. Affected families have been fighting the demolitions as part of the Karachi Bachao Tehreek or KBT. Almost 6,000 houses have been demolished, affecting over 66,000 people. Once a project is complete, around 10, 100,000 people could be impacted. The government announced a compensation of around 530 US dollars for each family. However, only a few people have received the money so far. Meanwhile, in many cases, the checks bounced. The Supreme Court finally ordered the resettlement of the families on Wednesday. The government of Sindh will have one year to finish the process. And finally, China will not build any new coal-fired power projects abroad. President Xi Jinping made the announcement at the UN General Assembly on September 21st. A Boston University study showed that China had financed 13% of overseas coal power capacity between 2013 and 2019. Meanwhile, private entities from Japan, the US and Britain are behind the remaining 87%. China's decision has been welcomed by climate activists. However, concerns around its domestic emissions remain. Xi has pledged that China will achieve a peak in CO2 emissions in 2030 and carbon neutrality by 2060. The country will also support green and low-carbon energy projects in other countries. President Xi also stated that China is aiming to provide 2 billion COVID-19 vaccine doses to the world in 2021. This will include 100 million doses to COVAX and another 100 million to other countries. Xi has also proposed a global development initiative to confront the impact of the pandemic. He also called on countries to reject the practice of forming small circles or zero-sum games. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.